Assalamu alaikum. Hey guys, this is Abdul Shaheed and welcome back to the Daily Quran Challenge. And in today's session, we are talking about the verse uh, 110, Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءَ Like, uh, establish the prayer. Establish the prayer. Like, this is the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here. Like, establish the prayer. Why? Because the prayer is for you. It is not for Allah. And we'll come back to this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءَ Give your zakat. Give your zakat. Give your zakat meaning like be of those who are giving and not those who are taking. Like zakat is an obligatory part of being a Muslim. But like why? Because it helps you. It purifies your wealth. But we, we don't want to talk about that too much today. What I want to focus in on is aqimus salah. Well, because Allah subhanahu wa says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ And this is the key. Allah says, and whatever you send forth, meaning whatever righteous deeds you are doing whatever things you are doing like of good it is for you لأنفسكم, عند الله, that you will find with Allah so you won't lose anything like whether you give zakah you will never lose like uh, in fact you will gain by giving zakah you will gain by giving you we always gain by giving by holding back we lose so as for the salah I want to focus in on that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the salah is for you. Allah says the salah and the zakah, the prayer and your, your, your charity is for you. It's not for anyone else because you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very important because, you know, in today's modern uh, culture, we find that we are distracted by so many different things. Like we begin our day and before we know it, our day is ending and we're so rushed off our feet in entire day. You're studying, you're working, you're managing your family, like uh, you're managing all the things that are going on in your life and life is hectic. So where is the peace and the serenity? Where do you find that contentment of uh, like uh, that rest? You know, when I say contentment here, I'm talking about rest. Where do you find that tran tranquility in your life on a day to day basis? You know, if you look at many people, like in, in our society, what are they doing? Like many people, they, 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 um, they meditate. Why do they meditate? They meditate in order to close themselves off from all of the distractions of their lives, right? And it's a good practice. It's a good practice. I'm not telling you to meditate, by the way. I'm just saying that the practice of closing yourself off from all the distractions of life is a good practice. And, and the people, they do this because they don't have what we have. They do it because they don't have what we have. And if, in fact, if we do the same thing, then it's because we don't have or we haven't utilized what we have. And the number one thing to utilize is the salah. The salah, Allah says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ And whatever you send forth for yourself, for yourself, لِأَنفُسِكُمْ It's not for anyone else. Right? You will find it with Allah. Allah will give you the benefit of that in the hereafter. But you will find the first benefit of that right now. But how do you do that? How do you do that? And this is where, this, this is where um, when we talk about khushu, this is what it is. Like khushu in the salah. Khushu in the salah is um, like having that serenity, that, that pure focus in the salah. Right? Now, when, when we come into the salah, what should we be doing? Like, how should we benefit from it such that five times a day, like, you're getting some form of serenity, some sort of peace away from all the distractions. You're able to focus on just yourself because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the salah li anfusikum. Like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, like, uh, the salah for you, not for anyone else. And the thing is, if, when you look at it like a, um, like a burden, like you've got to do it five times a day, then you'll never benefit from it because you're not coming to the salah like it's going to benefit you. You're not coming to the salah with the right frame of mind. 
Like when you when your world is in a flurry, you're you're living in a storm of activities. Like constantly, there are things going ra- going on around you, right? And you're in, you're living in a storm of activities. Like how do you find that peace and serenity? You have to focus in on that salah. Like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa akimu salah." Like uh, establish the prayer. Establishing the prayer will give you that. But establishing the salah means to have uh, khushu, like uh, um, like to have a serenity of your of your your heart. You have to focus in on exactly what you're doing. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Pray as if you see Allah, and know that you'll never see Allah." So pray as if you see Allah. Like focus in that salah as though it is a meeting that you're having with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now, anything that you you do. From from uh, Fajr until Dhuhr, in between, like when you go to that meeting at Dhuhr with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, if you focus on that meeting and you focus on communicating with Allah, then what you will get out of that one meeting in your life will will revolutionize your entire day. And if and if it perfects your day, and if it helps you to have peace of mind, if it helps you to have uh, patience, if it helps you to be um, hopeful, then it's served you. It's already served you before you've got to Jannah. Because when you get to Jannah, you're going to get the actual fruits of that salah. But for now, like this, this, you know, the side effects of the salah, the benefits, the side benefits of the salah is that it helps you to um, stabilize yourself. It helps you to give you a peace of mind. Now you can never attain that peace of mind until you focus. In that salah, and that's why you have to follow the messenger of Allah. In that He said, "Pray as if it's your last prayer. Pray as if it's your last prayer. If it was your last prayer, what would you do? If if this salah is the last prayer before you go back to Allah, how will you be in that salah? You will be." Absolutely focused. You'd be thinking about you're back to meet Allah. So in this prayer, you're going to be making repentance. You're going to be making du'a, asking Allah for things that you want, things that you you want uh, you to leave behind for your family, things that you want to um, give up. Um, you'll be thinking about all of, all your problems, the, the, all your problems, all your all the things you've done wrong, and you'd be thinking about how to fix it. And once you've got that all off your chest. You'll feel as though if you continue in that in that communication with Allah in that salah, you'd feel as though um, you some sort of serenity, a peace is coming over you. But that cannot happen until you have connected to Allah in the salah. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us that the salah, this is the closest that you can come to to Allah when you put your head to the ground and you're asking Allah and you're begging Allah, and and that's the point where you gain that serenity. That's the closest that you can come in the dunya to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So if you don't have that focus in the salah right now, like when will you get it? If you can't enter the paradise of this dunya, this the salah is the paradise of this dunya. Like for the salah to enter into your heart, you have to enter into the salah 100%, absolutely focused on your meeting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that's what this is all about. Like life is all about this. Like life will take you from from one place to another. Your desires will drag you from one thing to another. It will never be enough. It will never be enough. But in the midst of all of that, that that huge storm of life, how do you gain peace and tranquility? The salah. And that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says here, "Aqimu uh, salah," because this will give you what you need, inshallah. So inshallah, I'll leave you with that. Um, don't forget. I'd like to hear like what it is that you, what benefits you're deriving um, in the from these verses. Like, leave comments b- below and uh, let me know exactly what it is. Maybe you're seeing something I'm not seeing. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.